Sorry, you are making noise. All right, I welcome you, my people of Biafra, my people all over the world. Anyway, you are watching, seeing us, peeping, I looking, joining from. I greet you in the name of Chuku Okike. You are all welcome this day. We are going to see the breaking news headlines, and then we talk about um, whatever Nigerian army shamefully admitting or accepting shooting to dead a 16 year old boy that is right in their house you see this is what has been happening in biafra land but they have never admitted but it's quite unfortunate that um it is happening to other people now and uh, the world is seeing it and i'm happy that nigerian army is accepting responsibility of whatever it is they have done and i tell you the truth if you are keeping mute believing nigeria is not your business nigeria is not your problem they can go on and they shoot and the mot and on live as many as possible bro very soon they will get your domot. I see Regina Daniel, Ajia now, Ajia Regina Daniel ranting. I wonder what a small girl like Regina Daniel is talking about. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just clueless of what Regina Daniel is now turning herself into because her husband is a politician and she is just let me she is not my problem she is not our problem but i want us to know that people without vision are visionless people making money and living on money living worthy living healthy um is not all about life when you are living well what about the people surrounding you the people around you are they living well because when you are living healthy and living well the people around you are sick and they are hungry they are dirty don't count it affects you because when there are sickness we get we get to uh if they have infectious diseases it is going to be affecting you and your children and your family if they are hungry, you will be ashamed of yourself when people will visit you. If they live in mud or holes or trash or whatever. <laughs> that is why Morocco said, Oye Batego, Oye Chukubaragi Christmas, Ebari Begi. That is where we are when you have found the light stand up for your right and when you have seen the light try and leave even the little smallest ray of the light in the dark that the lost may come back through the ray of that little light you leave in the dark i bring greetings this day mazi uh mazi as i greet you Thank you so much, Mazubiaze. Thank you so much, Kennedy Don. I welcome you. I greet you, first of Saturday. William e. Louis, I greet you, Nolin, Nolin. You're welcome. Uh, we are all welcome this wonderful morning. Um, Nigeria is still confused. The people of Nigeria confused. You see the problem in this life i used to say is that when you have problem and you don't even know you have problem you will not even looking for the solution but when you have problem and you know you have problem it's only when you will begin looking for the solution the beside there are people that have this problem and they know they have problem but they are not bothered 
looking for a way of resolving their problem i call them fools and there are people that have problems they don't even know they have problem they take it as part of life uh something must happen it's a coincidence we are here i call them also fools but we are their friends who have problem we know we have not been accepted we know we've been rejected we know we've been marginalized or we know we've been rejected and we are telling you we are going that is why i must tell you about to keep shouting Igbo must go if possible shout it loud if you need a microphone i have free microphones to give you come i, I i'm telling you the truth I'll be the last person to be against any tribe in this world telling us to go home. But when you will know that we are mad, is when you touch anybody. In the name, Igbo must go. We are not against you saying Igbo must go because Igbos want to go. And I want us all to know that when they are telling you Igbo must go, don't think it's only Igbo speaking people. When they're telling you Igbo must go, people like Asare Dokobo inclusive, Wike inclusive. Uh, uh, this Regina Daniel that is ranting now because she's married to a senator, inclusive. So they are not exceptional. Every one of them is involved in this evil must go but that's not our problem our problem is that we truly want to go but the day you start burning people's properties or destroying people's properties or lynching people in the name they are evil is the day you will understand the nonyala when i want them. yeah try it Days are gone when you will get a Biafra man and lynch on this. You it, it, it will no longer work. Those days are gone. We are now on the offensive side. We are now in the era of if you push me, I will push you. If you touch me, I go punch you. If you come near me, I go grab you through for gutter. That's where we are now. We are moving on with speed. We are not stopping. So when anybody is telling you, Igbo must go, hallelujah, that is a good voice. They should bring it up more because we need to go home. And they are not reminding us because we already know we are going home. But you dare not push. Hmm? You can speak, but don't push. Because when you push, we go throw you off the uh, uh bridge and when you get thrown out of the bridge you know where you're landing in the ted Lame, um, in the mediterranean sea <clears throat> so i greet every one of us Igbo must go i stand with that um uh Igbo must go yes it's not bigotry i know but i don't believe to them they believe they are bigotry. I mean, I'm not saying it like that. I'm seeing it as they are fools. Because why they are calling Igbo must go is not even anything close to what we are thinking. Not that they really want us to go. They are calling Igbo must go. When they sit down and they look at the beautiful buildings and cities Igbo has built in Lagos, they see Lake, they see Banana Island, they see uh, this one, Lagos Island, they see Kija, see everywhere. They become greedy and the testy of what they do not build. They are not building, they are not ready to build. They did not build. They think Igbo must go east, but shoot them out of Lagos and they take over Lagos. No, they don't know it is not like that. Igbos are going, but you cannot take away anything that belongs to Igbo. That's one thing you must know. But as for our Igbos going, we are already going before you are talking. So you are not reminding us that we are going, those Yoruba people. So shout it loud. Eh? Uh -huh. When you will know that Igbos are your brain is when you touch anybody. Igbos will go. Anyway, we continue to move. This morning, I saw this. 
I saw this and um, I think um, it just, but it's not my news, it's not our news, but I think uh, we should just talk about some small, small headlines here and there. They say Congolese citizens burned down a foreign owned brothel in the, um, in the suburb of Kinshasa. The brothel was also used for drugs and the human trafficking. And um, there was the other news I get that said that the suburb belonged to uh, a Nigerian. I don't know how truthful that is. But whatever, however, that is not our business. But I believe um, brutal, when you look at the brutal, you see these Asian people. <laughs> That is it. So, well, protesters, uh, protest, price of tomatoes, pepper, crashed to 60,000 per basket. As you are seeing, that is the basket. You can see a basket of tomato that is 60,000 naira. And I wonder how many people can afford this 60,000 naira per tomato. That means half of it should be about 30,000 naira. And uh, to tell you the truth, half of this basket is only going to feed a family, a pot of stew. Probably this is what you buy for 5,000 naira before. Now you will buy it for 60,000 naira. And when you buy this for 60,000 naira, I don't even know if it's up to 100 um, balls of tomatoes are uh, inside. And you begin to sell it. One ball of tomato. And there are big ones and there are small ones. Let's say small ones, you will sell them for ten, um, uh, two 2,000 per one. And then the big ones, maybe big ones should be like um, 4,000 per one. That is the country. And you see where these people are selling this thing? I don't know. But I want to tell you that they are paying taxes for sitting outside selling this under the sun. That is the country you called nigeria that's the same country you see people defending that is the same country you see people fighting you to keep <laughs> it is amazing oh amazing nigeria amazing nigeria amazing nigeria Amazing Nigeria, evil forest. Hey, no. When you see, uh, uh, let's just quickly go into what the newspaper says today. Hmm? We go in into what the newspaper say, and um, before we come to the our prime minister, or oh, let let's go to our prime minister's handle on Twitter to see um to see if there is any update from him um let's quickly go to our prime minister's hand mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let me see if there's any breaking news any breaking news oh. All right, um, I think that's something that we should look into. Let's just quickly see this. Our PM said, I will read out what he said about this. He said, we call on Nigeria. Hold on here. Hold on here. He said, we call on Biafrans to disregard this fake and this taste video of the Nigerian desperate criminals in IPOB Nigeria listen to the ill old fools. They kidnapped young boy by shooting quam 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 by with pump action. Mm? Okay. 
So um, uh, the video, I don't know how to, uh, the video is, uh, most of us may have seen this video. You may have seen this video where they kidnap two people, kidnap all these men you see, these able-bodied men. I don't want to show where they where they are, where they tie those people because already my videos have been, uh, my videos, are, my YouTube channel are having problem now already as I'm speaking now. It is already having problem. That began to mark all my videos, yellow, 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 one and one and one. And. So I, I pray that it will end there. May they know begin the delete together we we'll make dreams come true. so um let's quickly see this from our pm our handle yeah let's quickly see this well, where, where is the twitter we move hand in hand we stand as one fostering hope so the work is done together we will rise strong and free for a better biafra for you and me together we we'll make dreams come true Together, we will build a strong community and Biafra. With your support, we will shape our destiny. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is your own behalf of Biafra TV, and I am delighted to invite you to our first ever fundraising event on August. This event is dedicated to support the restoration of Biafra. We deeply appreciate your support and looking forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Hey, dear Biafra, gather on for children's future. Let's make us under ministry of children cause to rest our land breaking walls. Come join us on Sunday, come join us on Sunday, be the change. Come join us on Sunday, come join us on Sunday, be the change. Support the children, their dreams in range for the youth of Biafra. Support the children, their dreams in range for the youth of Biafra. Up to 20 years. Building bright futures to 20 years. Building bright futures. Dry in their tears. All right. Um, before we continue, I'm begging you. All this will come here. You ask of this Lison Lison. I beg you, that's the way you do it. Blessed Abraham Venture. Mazugo, please. I need Benel, BJ Republic admin, admin number. Anybody that needs any contact or number to any admin, what you do is this very simple. Instead of looking for who to give you, I'm going to show you something now. How to get any contact you need. We have a website. You go to www.biafrarepublicgov.org. Republic, that is it here. Biafrarepublicgov.org. I'm bringing it to the screen. Um, make it full. Make it full. Making it full. Okay, you come here. You see Biafra Republic Gov .org here. Why is my this is not? I've changed to white. I would have loved it to be another color. So you will see. Anyway, you see Biafra Republic Gov .org here. When you type Biafra Republic Gov, www.biafrarepublicgov.org, 
if you come here it will bring you here if you open the website this is what you see you will see whom you see you you can go there on your at your own ledger see what is there see you can go to io you find out everything you want to donate it's here you still donate you scroll down you see vote you want id card you want uh, anything registration you want to uh, this is where you get every information every information but we no limit what we need to know to asking people getting from people i beg everybody i beg everybody here donation here everything if you want supporters you come here you see supporters these are the people everything is here everything home is where you started home is here come here you see everything everything i'm just showing us this thing so you you instead of because if if you are if i don't look into the comment section now i will not see that you are asking for this number and i will not be able to give it to you hmm? so i am saying this so that um you will be able to know how to do it yourself i beg you don't depend on people so if you want any contact you if you enter there www.biafrarepublicgov.org you go to contacts if you go to contact you keep scrolling down scroll down scroll down scroll down scroll down scroll down you see you keep scrolling down after america you see other here is it other license offices if you come to other license offices countries phone number you see algeria you see and i hope it's showing on the screen yes it's showing there you see Algeria, Angola, Anguilla, Anguilla, Austria, Australia. Hold on now, no run speed. Now why they run speed? I run in speed. Okay, Algeria, Angola, Anguilla, Austria, Australia, Bahrain, Babu. Oh God. Barbados, Belgium, Benin. You are asking of Benin. Here is Benin. I believe you can see Benin now. Benin Republic. That is Benin Republic. This is how you scroll until you find where you are looking for your license. It's very important that everybody know their own license. Know your license. Belong to your license. Me at this point, I, did, I am in my own license so try and get involved in what is going on in what we are doing hmm? it's very 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 important very 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 important ah uh, very 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 like our <laughs> what Solomon will always say you very 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 important Mm? So we will continue moving. Mm? All right, I think um, we should move on from now on. Okay, uh, from our PMs, um, our P <laughs> from our PMs uh, platform, we see the uh, uh, what do you call it? Modern of uh, the three, three, uh, uh, modern of 18, 16 year old boy and the paying ransom of, um, paying ransom of uh, how much? Ransom of $188. $188 for a life. For a life. It's a shame that Nigeria is here and they are boldly claiming that they are here paying 180 dollars for lives it is still baffling me 
it is still baffling me. And I see Idris Abdukarim, Nigeria Jaga Jaga Master, coming up. He said, protest. Python dance would have been a joke if the Russian flag were found with an Igbo man. Idris Abdukarim. This is a wonderful, undiluted truth from Idris Abdukarim. Had he been that this Russia flag they are flying, it, 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 listen, it don't even need to be with found with an Igbo man. Had he been, it is in Biafra land that this Biafra um, Russian flag is being flown. Hey! What in the operation? Operation um, Python dances. Maybe it would have been operation Python dance, operation every dance in short. It would have been operation every dance. Operation dance inside house on top of roof, inside the spirit. They would have even leveled the people that are dead already. They would have even leveled the grave of our old people and old everybody they would have even gone to mortuary and leveled everybody despite knowing that day. but look at how they are handling it nobody have been arrested forget when they tell you that they have arrested the culprit that sued it. you you arrested them yesterday you maybe yesterday we saw 200 people that flew flown the flag that hoist the flag today we are seeing more than 10,000 protesters with this same flag, waving Russian flag, telling you, Russia, come and help us. Nothing has happened. Nobody has gone there to level down anybody. We have not seen any Operation Golden Dance, Operation Small Dance, Operation Crocodile Smile, Operation Elephant March Down, Operation whatever, whatever. We've seen nothing. Even oppression hippopotamus, even oppression, oppression bumble of them, oppression level down. We have not seen any. And the Musa is not doing anything. Musa is not doing his work. Because Musa should know that that place should have been oppression level down everybody with Russian flag. This should have been the right operation. Uh, by now, we would have been getting news that everybody with the Russian flag has been leveled down. All that hoisted the Russian flag are now down so that nobody will be hoisting Russian flag. And I want us to know that those that hoisted um, uh, American flag during the exiles in Biafra land in Port Harcourt, they are still in detention today. No, the, being charged with terrorism and the treason finally and they are still there i don't know if i can find it in gogo let me see if i can find it in gogo let me just see if i can find it And SARS in Port Harcourt. Port Harcourt. Let me see if you can see it. Okay, and I can I can look for it now. I can see it, but I want you to know. I want you to know that. Okay, what happened to them? I got uh, seven days uh, court resident protest peacefully having been no no um no 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 what happened I 
Anyway, let us not waste our time. But if you go read, you will find out that there were they were all massacred. They were massacred because they waved American flag. They massacred our people. In number, you see the pictures, you see the videos. And today, we see um, in 2020, November 3, 2020, the, the governor states, the governor stated that the curfew imposed on Oyobibu was to restore calm. And then people were murdered, people were killed. But today, we see many things going on worse than what we see in Obibo. Nothing has happened. Nobody has been killed. Only one person that was shot in the Cardona or Kano area and they admitted that they did. And then they have been begging. They have been calling for forgiveness. Shameless Nigerian army. Shameless Nigerian government. Uh, I, I don't know why the army has been. The, uh, listen, Nigerian army said that they are not coming in. That they are standing by the side. That they are in barracks. But today, I may have claimed responsibility of shooting people to death. Why police is telling you that nobody was shot to death? He just forced claim that the people that they are claiming died are propaganda. But yesterday, from the video we do, uh, we, we showed here, I will show maybe if I have the time, I will show it again. We saw the boy was shot right inside his house. And when the boy was brought out, the sea went on to shoot him again. That is the kind of country somebody is here defending. That is the kind of country somebody is here telling you he love. He want to defend. That is why they will gather on spaces to fight against me and you. Because we said we want to liberate ourselves from the mental slavery. You think you are free from Nigeria? You think you are free from uh, what you call them, um, British colonial colonies? You are not free. I was on space this morning when my brother said that uh, they easily handed you over to yourselves to make you believe you are free. Instead of fighting with you, they have better things to do. So they said, let us just give them freedom. And we are still their masters. Is it not true? Neocolonialism. They are still the masters in charge. And you are still the, uh, 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 being colonized by people you don't even know. You think it's until they come to your country and become governors and become ministers. What is the problem? So that is what we are saying. So we are going into, let's just see what Nigerian newspapers say today. Um, before we talk about our prime minister, I think um, that should be the last one. Okay, great song, Roya. Mazigo, please not every one of us know how to use the smartphone <laughs> some of us are old <laughs> ah, 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 grace some of us are old quoi? Eh? some of us are old quoi? <laughs> grace oh, this one catch me eh? <laughs> some of us are old <laughs> Uh, 
<laughs> okay, you are talking generally. Okay, maybe he want to speak to someone in admin. Um, okay, okay, but I believe um, he has gotten the Benin Republic number. If you didn't get it, um, okay, let me just post the number so you don't think um, it's not. I'm just saying because so many people don't know they can access the um, the this thing, the website. So that is the Benin Republic number, please. What? YouTube redirected your comment. This usually means the link is from. What link is from? Come on. What do you mean by the link I put? I didn't put any link. I only pasted this number. That's no spam. Why, why are you telling me spam? They said that the number I put is spam. Okay, let me type it here. But a Republic number, I will type it. Because these people, what they are doing, just imagine. They said that it's a spam. A spam that I put to Benin Republic. Hmm. God, the person. Hold on. Let me put it here. Why now? Uh -huh. Just a moment. Let me. Ben Okay, plus um plus two two nine plus two two nine six one zero zero seven nine four one um, okay okay now I posted it mm, triple M I greet you that is the number I copied it to Pestia that are telling me that the number is um is a spam. <laughs> that the website I brought it in from is a spam. You can never imagine what these people are doing. Or the group. Or the group. But God pass them. Hmm? Yeah, therefore I exodus. We move. Thank you. Thank you, my sister uh Grace, for reminding me of this. So my brother that asks of the number is not that um I'm, I'm I'm always here to help anytime you ask me for help. So I want us to get that one true, 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 true. We move airborne, we move. So quickly, like I said before, let's see um what nigerian newspaper are saying today we go to nigerian news today first of all maybe we are going to be seeing headlines not every news we are not going to go into details and then um let's see we go into the news today we go to nigerian news today you see Four more bodies recover in Niger mining site. Four people, four more bodies, they, they, they collapse. Mm -hmm. Let me start here. Um, I believe it's still on the screen. Okay, now, now he said over 20 villagers are drowned while fleeing bandit attack in Zamfara State. This, I think, uh, this happened the last month. But um, that, that I show you over how many? 20. You get the message. And then we still see another news that says um, reaction straight confusion among Baoshi youth was killed by a soldier police reveal. Now you come here, you see um, six killed. And um, I think here yeah, he's showing. He said, Six persons, mother, 26 persons abducted as terrorist attack Cardona communities. And then we'll move on. Um, I think uh, that is the headlines we have. Um, Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigeria. 
Nigeria, the rejoicing black market dollar, US, eight August. So we are not interested. And then, um, uh, legit news. I'm coming. We will go to our prime minister. We'll go to our prime minister. Just a moment. Just a moment. We go to Daily Post. Fire caught a uh, telephone station in Lagos State today. And I don't know how many casualties we have, but I know um, I saw a man that was affected. Um, um, we continue, we continue. No point of going through this. Let me just go through. Scrap dealers threaten to sanction members. Um, no, I think it's okay. Let's go away from here quickly. Quickly, um, let's go here. Um, Nigeria police admitting to, um, hold on, let me bring it to the screen. All right. Now, Nigeria, Nigerian army admits killing 16-year-old boy by mistake. This is, you see, Nigeria, Nigeria is good in painting lies. I don't know if this is on, on the screen already. They said it's by mistake that they killed this boy by mistake. And my question is this, what is the mistake about going into somebody's compound and the shooting the person right inside his house? What is mistake? I think I have the video. Um, let me see if I have the video, I'll bring it. You watch again and see with your own eyes how the boy was murdered i think i have the video um what is this video about and then this what is this video about also think this is the video to um zaria where uh imano bagudu has been um and the other army from the van get out from the van and he followed them he followed them, he cut the other guy, he started kicking him, trying to shoot him. The guy could not run, he stayed. Eyes of everyone who's watching us now. At them. Now, they said it's a mistake, right? I want you to watch and see the coverage. The people that went on ground to find out what really happened. You will now see, I don't know, the, the many of you that may have missed it yesterday. I want you to see how they shot the boy. He was right inside their own papa house. There they went, they caught him. They shot not one, two times. I want you to watch. So take it and you go. So, so this is the entrance. Zuka, zuka, sir. Okay, so for them. Look at the first bullet. Okay. So this is the first, this is the whole of the first bullet. Do you see the bullet? You see the bullet shot? And the Nigeria is telling you that the boy was mistakenly shot. You get are you getting the message? Nigeria said is a mistake. Nigerian army said is a mistake. Yesterday we saw TVC news telling you that. It was a stray bullet, also the same mistake. The boy was not targeted. What do you want? What I what mistake do you want to make when you shoot into people's homes, knowing that somebody, even when you know nobody lives in the house, why will you be shooting into people's homes? People without gun. People that were not attacking you. 
people that saw it's only in nigeria that police um, uh, children or people we see army or police they will run away this only happened in nigeria where people will see army or police race or say boat here each time i'm with my children when they see police because you don't see i don't my children have not seen, even me i only saw army in while i was in switzerland i think yeah and they are red cross army i've never seen army on uniform i see them knowing them to be army i've never seen them on move on meaning on you i've seen their um, uh, military uh, small military chief but i've not seen them like as this uh, labaja to read the dress now i've never seen army and I, I don't even know if i've seen them on telly ever since i came to Europe, how many years now yeah 20 almost 20 years now i've never seen any military man with my own eyes so my children don't even know what army look like either, unless they see them on cameras on videos in school but physically my children i have three children they have never seen army they have not seen army the way you see army in Nigeria. So Nigeria is the only place people see army, see police, they run away. So what I'm telling you here, sometimes when I'm going out or when I'm out with my kids, when they see police, they greet them, Ola, police will say, Ola, they will bring their hand. Police will come down from moto, come shake my hand, come shake my picking hand. In Nigeria, if you see police run, if you see army, despite you running away, you run into your father's house, they will come there and they will release their bullet. This is the second one. This is the second bullet. This one. Yeah, this one. So one, two bullets fired at the boys that ran away. At the presence of um arrival of nigeria military they ran because they know already that nigeria military and police are known with one thing shoot at sight even when there is no reason to shoot just shoot you have the gun anybody you shoot we've had them say eh, almost time we shoot you and nothing will happen anybody you shoot is a criminal that's the kind of language that came from them and we have seen it look at it i'm i showed this video in full yesterday i'm not going to i just want us to see this particular part then you see what the nigerian military have told you that they shot the boy by mystic they accepted yes they admitted yes yes it's their problem that there is their mistake they shot at boy but they said it's a mistake but was it truly that the boy was shot mistakenly no the boy was not mistakenly shot the boy was purposely died. it wasn't a mistake and here they are telling you it is a mistake. Listen. Have another one inside on your on your light. Okay. So the bullet penetrates this line. The line of the bullet. It scratches here. There's the there is scratch here. You guys can come. Yeah, that's one bullet. This one. And this is the most horrible sight here. Yeah. So it's a very particular situation. In fact, one of the most one of the most uh, touching stories is the fact that uh, 
the person that uh, the, the boy was shot right in front of his uh, in front of his uh, elder brother or younger brother? Elder brother. Elder, in front of elder brother. Because the elder brother, the older brother was coming just at this spot. So in the in the process of the elder were trying to close the door, so the bullet down passed in front and went and met the victim. That was what really happened. The victim was just coming in from here, right inside the house. So these are all family members who are actually bereaved right now. So you want to ask another question to the eyewitness, second eyewitness? Well, um, Emmanuel, I think I think I think with what you've shown to us, it, it's a very touchy situation right now. Quite sad. Seeing a family losing okay, a lot of He wants to, want to see. But go ahead. Go ahead. Want to say something. It's almost the same thing. Data when the quality in the FDI. So women are on the dick. I want to defer. I want to niche. But one one day to nisu. But one one day to reach nisu. Anyways, thank you, thank you, my sister Grace. Anyways, you have seen what Nigeria said or called mistake. A mistake. And according to them, the army man came to the door. Not that the army man was shooting from afar. The army man came to the door, seeing that they shot the door, then shot through the door, and he got the bullet. So you see the news, and yet they have got to tell you it's a mistake. Do you know why? Because Nigeria is a place where law never existed where the rule of law has become the rule of evil where the rule of law has become a the rule of injustice that is why you see them shooting at people as if people are not even human beings I will read it for you. Let me just read for you what Nigeria Army says about the shooting. Now, this is a People's Gazette. It says, hold on. Nigeria Army says its troop mistakenly killed a teenager during the end bad governance protest in Samara town in Zaria, Cardona on Tuesday, that's two days back. A statement shortly after the fatal shooting by Army spokesperson Onyema Wachiku said, 16-year-old boy Isma Ismail Mohammed was killed by a soldier who wanted to fire a warning shot to despair hoodlums. You wanted to fire a warning shot to despair hoodlums in somebody's house. Are you getting the message? In somebody's residential house is where you want to fire a warning shot to despair hoodlums. That means, you see why I said before, they must attack you evil. They have already attacked the people in that area Good lumps. So you have to shoot at the hoodlums. When you see hoodlums, you are shooting harassing bullet to disperse them, isn't it? Why don't you arrest the hoodlums? Must you kill the hoodlums? Why you know that? Why don't you catch them? Arrest them, handcuff them, shoot them to us. The army said it was alerted by a distress call that the protest in Samaru in Samaru had turned violence and that hoods, hoods, hordes of hoodlums were burning tires on the road and the party stones on security personnel. <laughs> listen, no, listen. They said, listen again, listen. There are security personnel now. Where did I end? Security personnel. I want you to see something. There's something I uh have. -huh. You see? Um, listen here. I think I should enlarge it so you will see 
let it not seem as if I'm just reading something that is not true. Um, let me put it here. Okay, it's better now. Okay, now listen here. Listen. The I mean, oh God, why all this advert now? Well, the army said it was alerted by a distress call that the protests in Samaru had turned violent. That means there was no presence of security operatives in that area because the army said they got a distress call telling them that the violent year has turned, uh, the protest has turned violent. And now, listen, oh, for them, so for somebody to place a distress call means there was no presence of any security person there. Now, listen, and the, that hordes of hoodlums were burning tires on the road. Listen, oh, they were burning tires on the road and the petty stones on security operatives. I want to ask a question. Which security operative were they throwing the stones at? Is it the security operatives that were in the stations? Because from what they are telling you now, there was no presence of any security operative there. Then, how did the army get the call that they were throwing stones at somebody that was not in the presence, that, that somebody that was not uh, 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 on the scene? Somebody that was not at the scene, you are telling us, that means they were throwing stones on the army before they get there. Listen to the story. He said, see here, concentrate here. The army said, it was alerted by a distress call that the protests in Samaru had turned violent and that the hordes of the hoodlums were burning tires on the road. On the road, though, get the message, on the road, and the petty stones on security personnel. Who were those security personnel? <laughs> is for you to get the message. And they told you also that they were burning the tire on the road. So how did you come into somebody's compound and they release bullets into the house, living house? Mr. Wachiko said, troops were deployed to restore calm and enforce the curfew. Are you getting the message? They were, they were deployed to restore calm and enforce the curfew. That means there was no presence of any security personnel there before you go there. Who were they throwing the stone at? Who? You see, when we tell you that Nigerian journalists are only doing what they were told to do by the military, I want you to get the message. You see this news. I'm out to why area. Somebody cool. This video of them, people, family of the people of the boy, explaining things, showing you the house, how it happened what really happened you will not see arise news covering this kind of news we know you will not see channels news telling you showing you this kind of news they will not show it to you they will never show this kind of news they will only tell you that it was a mistake it was a stray bullet it was a mistake that thoughts were there hoodlums were there they were doing this, they were doing that, and then army came, and they mistakenly shot at the boy. But they will not tell you that army shot directly into the boy's father's house, and the boy was... This has been happening. This is not the first time it has happened. This kind of incident has been going on in Biafra land. They, they even throw bombs. This one has more kids.
So get the message. Get the message. So uh, let me continue reading for you. Mr. Wachiko said troops were deployed to restore calm and enforce the curfew that Governor Obasani had earlier imposed, but that the soldiers were fiercely resisted. Are you getting the message by a 16-year-old boy? You get the message? 16-year-old boy. The army spokesperson said that the hoodlum brazenly attempted attacking the troops, prompting a soldier to fire a warning shot to scare the hoodlums away, which unfortunately led to the death of a 16-year-old boy, Ismail Mohammed. <laughs> Nigeria. Nigeria. The soldier who fired the fatal shot, according to Mr. Wachiko, had been taken in for questioning while a delegation of officers was sent to condole with the braved, braved and attend uh, Mr. Mohammed's barrier. The diseased, um, the diseased mother, hold on, the diseased mother, Zaina Avosani said, the shooting occurred around 9 a.m. at the family's residence at a Sakim Power Street, Samaru Zaria, by a soldier on patrol alongside his college. She said, the late Ismail, the late Ismail was playing with his friends and the brother in front of their house. Are you getting the message? They were playing in the front of their house when they saw soldiers coming in their directions. When one of the soldiers pointing his gun at them ran into the house, and they shut the gate, Mrs. Sane said. Like I told you earlier, it's only in Nigeria that soldiers will threaten, police will threaten, soldiers will threaten little children, underage children with machines, sophisticated guns, arms. The arms that we are supposed to be for terrorists, against the terrorists, are now being used against the innocent citizens that are meant to be protected from these terrorists. You getting the message? The boy with his friends were in the front of their house playing. And when they saw army coming with the gun, they all ran. As I am here now, if police is running towards me with a gun, because I will not tell you, I mean, those of you in Western world, I don't know how many times you see army patrolling on the road, not to talk of seeing them with gun. Police, even here, police don't carry long rifle. They don't carry AK-47. They are only with their um, uh, uh, shotguns, um, uh, uh, what do you call, pistols. It might be uh, like a, a round of uh, 20 or 50, but it's always shot guns shot pistols so if i see them running towards me uh, the only thing i will observe am i on the way i will give chance maybe they are going after running to pursuing after a criminal and they will not shoot at that criminal unless the criminal is shooting at them but in nigeria you see children that are not even criminal Children that were not insulting you, children that were probably playing football, probably playing one game, what or the other, or Ludo, they saw you, they ran away, they ran inside the house. You still went to their house, went to the door after getting, after the dead, shut the door and shoot at them, ending them through the door. You shot them and they died. 
and you are here telling the world that it's a mistake. It's good that the world is seeing what they are doing. But my anger now is that this has been happening in Biafra land and nobody is reporting it. This has been going on in Biafra land. They come to your house, you run into your house, they will shoot you directly. If they could not get you through their bullet, they will burn down the house. If they could not get the house burned down, they will throw a bomb from up. This has been going on in Biafra land. Nobody, even People's Gazette, they don't report this. But unfortunately, that it happened in another area now, everywhere they are reporting it. Even if they are reporting it as a mistake, I don't care. Report what is going on in Biafra land. They stop. They kept mute. They will not report because they get their directives from Nigeria military. With one of the soldiers pointing his gun at them, they ran for their lives. They ran into the door, into the house, and they shut the door. Mrs. Sunny alleged that the soldier, however, shot at the gate, thereby killing Ismail, who stood by the gate to prevent the soldier from getting entry. Okay, the full story. So the boy entered the house, blocked the gate. So when the soldier wanted to get into the house, the gate was being blocked by the boy. So the soldier got angry. Why will you block the gate? And then shoot, knowing that the boy is there. So when they are telling you this is a mistake, I want you to think, what kind of mistake are you making? Knowing that somebody is right behind the door, Holding the door against you, you shoot. Two times, not once. If the first one was a mistake, the second one, Uncle, what you want called that one? Mistake extra. Ah, extra mistake. Mistake, mistake, ah, mistake. <laughs> Okay, the first one was a mistake. The second one was a mistake. Yes. Then the third one was mistake. Mistake that you shot a boy in his father's house and you are telling us it's a mistake. She added that his son had just written his final secondary school examination in Zaria and was seeking admission to further his education when the incident occurred. Um, the story had it very well. The story explained it. And the mother told you everything the way um, we saw it in the, in the news. Uh, because this news explained everything as well. See the news again. Let me go back again to the news a little bit so you will get the news. I wanted to see here. These are all the community members, the family members that, that who are all bereaved, that are currently talking to us. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to, to show you, you know, where the soldiers shot at them. So, so, so this is the entrance. Okay, so for them. Look at the first bullet. Okay. So this is the first, this is the hole of the first bullet. This is the second one. This is the second bullet. This one. Can I call it? Yeah, this one. So we also have another one inside on your on your light. Okay. So the bullet penetrate this line. The line of the bullet, it scratches here. There is, there is a scratch here. You guys can come. Yeah, that's one bullet. This one. And this is the most horrible sight here. Yeah. So it's a very particular situation. In fact, one of the most, one of the most uh, touching stories is the fact that uh, the person that uh, the, the boy was shot right in front of his uh, 
in front of his uh, elder brother or younger brother? Elder brother. Elder, in front of the elder brother. Because the elder brother, the elder brother was coming just at this spot. So in the, in the process of the elder brother trying to close the door, so the bullet down passed in front and went and met the victim. That was what really happened. The victim was just coming in from here, right inside the house. So these are all family members who are actually bereaved right now. So you want to ask another question to the eyewitness, second eyewitness? Well, um, Emmanuel, I think, I, think, I think with what you've shown to us, it, it's a very touchy situation right now. Quite sad, seeing a family losing okay, a loved one he want to, to that. He want to see... But go ahead. Go ahead, you want to say something. It's almost the same thing they did when the quality in FADI. So, women are on the dick upon the now. The, 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 if from what we read in the article we read or the story we read, the mother admitted that the army visited and the army said they visited. But what did they visit to do to pay 300,000 naira compensation? for the life of this young man, Ismail Mohammed, They paid 300,000 Naira, $180. $180 for the life of a human being, $180. I believe you can read this very well. You can see the screen, 100 and the eighty dollars is what they paid for the life. Make on a like this video now. Hmm? Make on a like. Try and like this video for me, please. Like this video, please. So, uh, as I was saying, as you can see, Nigerian Army compensate family of sixteen year old shot dead in Kaduna protest with 300,000 naira. It's not only Sahara reporter that had it. Every news yesterday had it. We saw it in many news. They compensated the boy's family with 300,000 naira. And then I begin to wonder, the, the, my, my own now, listen, my problem now, my annoyance now is not just that the boy was shot. The two most annoying thing here is that they shot the boy in his father's house. And going to his, is going to shoot the boy inside, not even on the front, on the frontage, no, inside behind the door you shot the boy dead as if that was not enough you said it's a mistake you were trying to disperse the hoodlums as if that was not enough they are bold to come out to tell you that they have compensated the family with the sum of 180 dollars it's not 188 dollars. It's 180 dollars. You've compensated the family with the sum of 180 dollars. Even a chicken, you cannot compensate a chicken owner for running over their chicken mistakenly. I'm not telling you of shooting the chicken. A dog, you know, a dog, a chihuahua, useless chihuahua, cat, useless cat that is owned by nobody. Because here you see cats that are abandoned. You see dogs that are abandoned, owned by nobody. Most of them, until the government, um, I don't know, I've forgotten what they call them, that take care of animals, see them, and take them. They remain. One a land a lot or light loitering around, and uh, some people give them food, buy food, and give them they eat. So, those dogs and the cats that are owned by nobody, if you mistakenly run over them, it's a mistake. But that's you run over them on the road, do but if you go to that place, they used to stay inside the one small 
plot or abandoned building, you go there and kill one. You go inside the bush, you're not inside the house, inside the bush or a site, a new site where they want to build their house and these cats are there or an abandoned uh, property, um, there's a garden there, the cats are always there in the garden. You go to that garden and stone one. No, no, no I'm even talking of killing. Just stone. Take a stone. Take a stone like this. Throw on one. Let somebody see you. You will pay a fine that is about maybe the kind of fine they will give you is the fine that when you finish paying it if you see any animal another day you will greet hey mr cat good morning sir mr dog oh airborne i'm telling you the truth those of you that live in the um in the western world western country will know what i'm telling you you dare not what is 180 dollars for life you compensate people's the family for their son's life 380 dollars <throat> it's a shame 180 dollars for life Hundred and eighty dollars. You lied that is a stray bullet. It was the boy that. But you went to the boy's house, entered the compound. The boy shut the door. Saw you run away. Shut the door. You still come to the door. You get to the door. Oh, oh, oh. And the boy died. You felt so sorry for the boy that you went to pay him, pay them a, a, a compensation of $300. I don't know. If people have integrity. People have honor. People have, uh, there are people that are principled. If it is poverty that led this man to accepting this 300,000 naira, the man, I will call him a coward and a steal, a fool. Because you have been poor all your life. You did not die. Your children have not been rich. You, have, you did not die. Why will you accept 300,000 naira that will not sustain you in next one month? The 300,000 naira that cannot sustain your family for one month. Not to talk of next three months. In next one month, the three hundred thousand naira will not get you out, and you accepted it. You went and buried your son. You accepted three hundred thousand naira. People will say hey, it's because of poverty. I know it's poverty. Yes, I know, and that is why Nigeria is always succeeding because we are giving them the credit they succeed in pushing you to the wall pushing you to the river drawing you to the river that is why most of us in diaspora are fighting for this freedom because the people in the homeland are not seeing what we have seen Hey, five, 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 be Sean. I greet you. They will five, five, five. They were my brother. Let us not keep wasting our time on this. I've, we dwell on this yesterday. We watched the video, how they shot the boy. You see it. And then Ami will still tell you it's a mistake. It's a mistake. Because everything for them is a mistake. See how they shot the boy. The soldier shot at them. So, so, so this is the entrance. Okay, so for them. Look at the first bullet. Okay. So this is the first, this is the whole of the first bullet. This is the second one. This is the second bullet. This one. Can I call it? Yeah, this one. So we also have another one inside on your on your light. Okay. 
So the bullet, this is a line. The line of the bullet. It scratches here. There is, there, there is a scratch here. You guys can come. Yeah, that's one bullet. This one. And this is the most horrible sight here. And this is the most horrible sight here. Yeah. So it's a very particular situation. In fact, one of the most one of the most uh, touching stories is the fact that uh, the person that uh, the, the boy was shot right in front of his uh, in front of his uh, elder brother or younger brother. Elder brother. Elder, in front of the elder brother, because the elder brother the older brother was coming just at this spot. So in the in the process of the elder brother trying to close the door, so the bullet down passed in front and went and met the victim. That was what really happened. The victim was just coming in from here, right inside the house. So these are all family members. You get the message. So when they will tell you it's, um, <laughs> it's a stray bullet, you get the message. When they tell you it's a stray bullet, you get the message. Only in Nigeria you see this kind of thing happening only in nigeria i pity those that cannot see from standing just as bob Mali said bob Mali said i pity on those who cannot see from standing i pity them if you are standing up and you are not seen i pity you honestly pity you you let me let us quickly read this one hmm? let us read this quickly about our prime minister so we move um our prime minister that in finland okay quickly he says um biafra Simon Egba alleges assassination attempt. Published on August 7, 2024. That was yesterday. By Ogaga Ariemu. The leader of Biafra government in exile <laughs> from 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 the self acclaimed <laughs> he is now the leader <laughs> you know that song that you used to say where jesus got yeah Dinile mana you beg up by a Jesus, a woe is a Jesus, come but obey. I can go, I can Listen from miscrants, criminals, kidnappers. Uh, what again did they call us? Um, terrorist. There is no evil bad name they have not tagged us with. Today, it's no longer like that. They are now changing the narratives. Well, the leader of Biafra government in exile, Simon Ekba, has alleged that there is assassination attempt against him. But this is not the first time. This is not the second time. This is, they have been trying. They have been trying. They came up. They said it in the open. They said it in the secret. What is secret about it? Everybody disclosed this in a statement through his official handle, X, on Tuesday. He claimed that a suicide bomber had been allegedly deployed from Abuja and headed for Finland. And at there he had to go finish. He further alleged this was the fifth attempt to take his life amidst his struggle for Biafra liberation in recent times. Emma said he was monitoring the situation and assured that 
Biafra independence would triumph over any attempt. Sending suicide bombers to Finland to attack Simon Egba is their last option, and they just departed from airport Abuja. This is just to inform them that we are monitoring them. Even from the time they dropped them at the airport to their next destination, we are waiting for you, Sesai Bomba, at the port of entry. Their Finland contact knows already he is in the port of soup. I remain committed to Biafra independence. This is your fifth attempt. You are now sending terrorists to Europe. If you know this man called Simon Egba, you will stop sleeping. Let me leave it here. It is not yet time for that he climbed. The man they could not arrest. The man they no feet arrest. Simon Epa. Atakata Wesia, what am I doing? Simon Epa, Atakata Wesia. Away, they now. Why did they remove it? Anyway, let me look for something else. Simon Epa. Atakata Wesia. Where is that song? Atakata Wesia. Let us lose a hair at the Catawba. Colonel Simon Wakwe, Commander, 56 Brigade, Ukadina Lotuku, Simon Oke Miline Bukwe, Simon Okuna Bozala, Simon Noko, at the Catawba. Hey, hey, hey! Colonel Simon Wakwe, Commander, 56 Brigade, Ukadina Lotuku, Simon, ok, miline bwe Simon, okuna bozala, Simon, ok, atakata bwe siya. Hey, hey, hey! All right. Now, I want you to, let's hear him. That Simon Epa is not looking anybody's face. The only person I respect in this struggle is Mazin Amdikano. I gave him my word. That I will never disappoint him. Before you pick a fight, Opo Pumbo, Abro Opuna no Madunu, Onya Hakadendo. No, Opo Punkemu, Honor Roginu, Oboge P. No matter what, you can't take it out. Abba Gomu Nigeria, no. Bandiro Biafra no no. Bandi Sina Biafra Gabia in 2023 no no. Aromaha no no. Nako ha wo wo. Woto woto. Okokwa. You can never swallow it. And you can never bring it out. So I want you people to understand that propaganda is ongoing. They even say they are signing petition to arrest someone else. I do not know, you know, you know, what kind of petition they are signing to arrest Agonepa for other reasons. These people don't understand that we are actually in freedom fighting. Freedom fighting where we do not validate Nigeria state. We are fighting for our freedom. Nigeria state have committed war crime, genocide, crime against humanity in our land. Leading us to take the decisive decision we are taking today and every necessary measure will be taken to make sure that we save their friends from nigeria come to 2023 if you come here like this you will be infected if you eat me as a meat or cancer in a cancer maybe or you cancer you finish again Come and eat me as a meat. If you eat me and go to sleep and wake up, you know him. You can't eat me. Come to 
<laughs> you see, this man called Mr. Epa. But people fail to understand the shoe. And the way the earlier you get the message, the better from Nigeria. Come 2023. The earlier, the better for you. We have come a long way to this point. If you don't understand, forget it. Today, Nigeria is Bala Jaga Jaga. Kata, kata, jaga, jaga. The truth is this. Have you imagined that if Biafra land has been involved in this um, uh, 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 protest, have you imagined what would have been happening in Biafra land? Not even in Biafra land, because what they do is, as long as you are a Biafran, you are evil. This is what people don't get. As long as you are a Biafran, you have this tag they put on your head here, evil. And for that, you are bound to be eliminated. Idris wrote today, Operation Python dance would have been a joke if the Russian flag we have flown with uh, we are found with an evil man. I can't think of my own reason. He said pure what he said here is hundred percent truth. Had it been that the protest is our people were involved. Our people are taking part. And they found this flag. Do you know that if, if, if not that our prime minister have been warning that they should, you should not involve yourself as a Biafran. Wrong. Far away from these people calling for this. Had he been our people were involved. As they flew, as they hoist this flag in Cardona, in Kano, they will come to Port Harcourt and they carry out shooting. Do you know that? You don't know. As we are calling for Lake Gate, we are crying for Lake Gate shooting. We have forgotten the shooting that happened in Biafra land. We've forgotten that more number, 10 times the number that we are shot dead in Lake in Lagos, we are recorded in Biafra land. We know the count that one now. We don't count that. We only count the one that happened in Lagos. Did you see CNN come to record it? Did you see BBC record anything about Biafra? No. They are only recording what happened in another land because me and you have been minus have been silenced has been closed from being uh report from reporters reporting you reporting anything about you it's not only uh, uh, um uh, uh, it's not just oh uh, i greet you oh because they were my brother mm? they were she it's not only that our people has been marginalized. You see, it that marginalized is a sophisticated, organized English. We have been minus because when you say marginalized, it's like you have some part you are you are not my you have been minus from every area. How can you tell me that a common senator that is representing Abia, that is representing Calabar? that is representing any land in Biafra land was endorsed by a Funani man in northern area. Without the endorsement of Funani, Apabio wouldn't be seen at present. Without the endorsement of Funani, uh, what is his name? Benjamin Kano or Benjamin Kalo would not be the rep he is today. Without Funani's endorsement, Abaribe will not return the post he have today. 
without the Funanese endorsement, Rocha Sokrocha would not be there. Even without Funanese endorsement, the, the, the um, uh, what do you call them? Local government chairman or councillor would not be there. The only people that have positions are those that have the endorsement of the Funanese. And you are telling me you are marginalized. You are not marginalized. You are being colonized by these people. You are being colonized. I've been colonized after the British have colonized you and they are still recolonizing you. They call them neocolonism. British is now neocolonizing you, Funani is now colonizing you. Two set of things at the same time from different two set of people. You are more educated than the Funani man. Funani man is colon. Listen, what will happen if all these people that are getting Funani endorsement are going to not to get endorsed? If you say we will not do it, you will see that your land you will run it by yourself. We are talking of their right because you have endorsed Funani have endorsed you. You think that is the end? Look at Devil Mai from promise of being the president to promise of being the vice president from promise of being the vice president to becoming um the senate president from becoming the senate president to speaker from speaker to uh, uh, what do you call it labor prefect labor prefect that is what i call him labor Prefect. No be level prefect. Is he not the level prefect master? The prefect. If he sees who does work and who does not do his work well, that is his duty. Level prefect. When we were in secondary school, that is what you call them. Level prefect. It doesn't matter how they like it. It doesn't matter how they dislike it. The truth remains the truth. There are those people that still believe in Nigeria from Biafra land are under the colonization of the Funani cabals. Whether you agree or whether you disagree with me, it doesn't make any difference. But the truth remains what I tell you here is the truth. How can a Funani man endorse your traditional ruler for you? Before you become a traditional ruler. A traditional ruler is supposed to be that the people of your community supposed to endorse you. No. The people of your community are not important in endorsing you. The people that matters is northerners that is why they must go to north bow down to them to get their endorsement and when they come back they will be your chairman or whatever you call them is that not one of your traditional rulers going to north to bow down to them that is what we are calling you to repent from all as long as you keep believing these people, you are living in lies, in deceit. That is a traditional rule about bowing to those people we call cabal. So when we tell you that even traditional ruler, not only those politicians, even traditional ruler, even traditional ruler have to go to north, get endorsed, to be your traditional ruler, what a shame. Is it not shameful? A very shameful act. And if somebody is seeing me as his problem. Somebody is seeing me as his problem because I said I want to be free from people that don't want to be free. 
I want to be free from people that have refused to understand that they are slaves. I want to be free from a bunch of people that are under the colonization of things that they should not, things that should not be, I, I don't know, things that are not qualified to be your housemaid or your cats even. You are now on that end. You come out, you bow to your Igwe. Igwe, he will touch your back and you are going. Igwe, the same Igwe you bow down to, we go to uh, Funane land and bow down to them. Is he not a disgraceful thing? Hmm? Is he not disgrace? Is it not a shameful thing? Today, we are not crying. We have learned how to endure. We have learned how to carry on with any situation, how to adapt, how to live. Even if it is cold, we live in cold. Even if it is hot, we live in hot. Whatever, if it is boiling oil, we learn how to live, how to adapt, living inside the boiling oil without complaining. We are not complaining because no matter how much you complain, nobody will listen to you. You can only complain to yourself and listen to yourself and advise yourself and they seek the solution yourself. That's why we are looking for our freedom because nobody is coming to give you this freedom. Only yourself. Nobody. Let's listen to the notes. Oh, oh here in the north. We have started seeing it visibly. People are hungry, very, very hungry. Many cannot go to their farms. All of us know this. In the North Central, the Northeast, and the Northwest. Even in Southeast, we still have crisis among the farmers and the headsmen. Even in Southwest, we still have this crisis. As it is now, a bag of rice is selling at about 100,000. A bag of maize, the same thing. Even prices of tomatoes, onions, and other basic food is high. Nigeria is very likely to experience highest food, highest session of food insecurity, even though globally, but most severely. Currently, there are four countries, including Sudan and some others, that are facing very serious food insecurity. And Nigeria is added to this list this year by International Rescue Committee as one of the hotspots for food insecurity. Action Against Hunger, World Food Program, FOA, also indicated that over 32 million people are expected to face critical hunger crisis and emerging level between June and August. And I don't know about some other colleagues, this issue of food crisis should be taken more seriously because this is the first time Nigeria is being included in countries that are likely to face very, very serious food crisis. If we don't take immediate action. Now, I want us to see there is something I've been asking, and I still keep asking this question. I am asking this question, and I need answer, answers rather. Why is it that Nigeria or Nigerians are today crying for food, hunger? Why? Is it because they, they suffer drought or they are suffering drought? What, what is the problem? 
Or is it because that, that the farmers are on strike? No. The truth, they refuse. When they come here, they sit down, they discuss rubbish and go home. I want you to listen to Dume from the beginning again. Listen to him. Listen. There in the north, or here in the north, we have started seeing it visibly. People are hungry. Very, very hungry. Many cannot go to their farms. All of us know this. In the north central, the northeast, and the northwest. Even in southeast, we still have crisis among. Many could not, many cannot, many will not go to farm. We know it. That is what he said. But what they are refusing to address is why those people could not go to farm. Why they cannot go to farm? Why they will never go to farm? Why? Because you cannot just tell me people cannot go to farm without explaining the reason why they cannot go to farm. Why can't they go to farm? They cannot go to farm because terrorists has taken over the land. They cannot go to farm because terrorists has asked them not to come to farm. They cannot go to farm because terrorists are in charge. They cannot go to farm because Nigeria is running state, willing state. They cannot go to farm because some of them could not be able to pay the taxes levied on them by these terrorist organizations in the north. And you are here addressing hunger. You are now addressing the situation, the real cocoa of the matter. You don't want to address it. You are addressing hunger without addressing the cause of the hunger. Why are the people hungry? You are not facing drought. You are not facing anything, nothing. No strike of farmers, only that. There is hunger. People are hungry, I mean. There is hunger in the land. And you are now witnessing it. And the fools are now protesting that there is hunger. Hunger, bad governance. We are facing hunger. People are dying of hunger. That's why we are protesting. People are dying of hunger. No food or food. No, our salary cannot. Listen, let me tell you. Even if they hike your salary to one million naira, a time is coming that a basket of tomato will be sold for 500,000 naira. A time is coming when you will have your salary, you will not be able to use it for anything good. Have you forgotten the military man from 50,000 naira there, uh, from 30,000 naira, his salary was increased to 50,000, and he was happy that now my salary has been increased from 30 to 50. He was trying to go home to embrace his family after one year, get into the park, the salary, including the increment, could not take him home. He found out that the transportation has also gone up. The transportation that used to cost him 10,000 is now 35,000 naira going home, 35,000 naira coming back. And he is having salary of 50,000 naira. Nigeria, hallelujah. A good, beautiful country. So what I'm saying is this. The problem is not clamoring for hike, increase in your salary. The problem is tackling the truth, the truth, the lies they tell people. 
They fry the lies they tell people. Some people are busy. The, the Biafras are busy cooking and enjoying their fried rice. Why some people in the Yoruba land and the Northerners are busy digesting, eating and digesting fried lies being told to them by people in their Senate. Listen to him. The farmers and the headsmen. Even in Southwest, we still have this crisis. As it is now, a bag of rice is selling at about 100,000. A bag of maize, the same thing. Even prices of tomatoes, onions, and other basic food is high. Nigeria is very likely to experience highest food, highest session of food insecurity, even though globally, but most severely. Currently, there are four countries, including Sudan and some others, that are facing very serious food insecurity. And Nigeria is added to this list this year by International Rescue Committee as one of the hotspots for food insecurity. Action Against Hunger, World Food Program, FOA, also indicated that over 32 million people are expected to face critical hunger crisis and emerging level between June and August. And I don't know about some other colleagues, this issue of food crisis should be taken more seriously because this is the first time Nigeria is being included in countries that are likely to face very, very serious food crisis. If we don't take immediate action and our citizens under this situation of increased fuel price, increased electricity price, increased everything, and we are yet to get the right measures to provide questions for our citizens. We wouldn't like the kind of thing that we see in our streets. And it is time that we take every possible action together with the executive arm of government to ensure that food flood our country, the right food, importation, government must be entirely responsible because we cannot, we cannot take people for granted for too long. Are you getting the message? They are not addressing the truth because this is their making. They are now telling you that you should be importing food for the people to eat. Why the terrorist is taking over the land? They are, you will be busy importing food, eating food, eating free food. Probably they give you any packet of Indomie, such as of Indomie, you go home, you eat. But they are now telling you, look at him, former Senate president. Look, look at him. Is telling you that the government must move. We must import food for people to eat because people are hungry. Is importing food the problem? The, you, the government of Nigeria will be importing food, sharing you food. Terrorists are taking over the land. Terrorists are busy. How long? The, listen. Even, okay, let's just assume that the terrorists say import food, don't farm again. Let's let's just go there now. Let, let us just visit there. If Nigeria should be importing food and the feeding people, Nigeria don't even have the money to import food and feed people. Let's be realistic. Nigeria borrow money to service their debt. That is. The interest, the, the, the money Nigeria realizes every year is not enough.
to service the debt that owing. That's to pay the interest of the debt that owing. So they borrow money to help to be able to meet servicing the debt. Paying these people you see here, sitting here in the red chambers and green chambers, telling you to go and import food. Are you getting the message? They are encouraging the country to go on and uh, import food so that the people should eat. Because they know what they are doing. They know the reason why there is no food in Nigeria. They know who is responsible for the hunger in the land. They know why the hunger is taking and this is just the strategy this is just remember they have to make sure they strangle you they will strangle you to a point that you will not have any choice have you seen the kind of um torture nigeria police and army give people they will torture you to the point that you will beg for your life to be taken away you watch that documentary from BBC, the boy they were torturing, and then the boy was begging them to shoot him so he died. They will torture you and make sure they brought you to that point where your life will be needless to you. So anything they give you, you will accept. I want to ask you a question. As the people outside, the people on the land, the free people are crying for food. Have you imagined what the people in IDP camp will be crying for? <laughs> these, these are the these people cannot protest. These people, nobody hears their voice. These people have nobody to complain to. They are just going to die and be forgotten there why somebody take over their land and the, the people in these idp camps are the remnant of those that should have been farming they have murdered the people that should be farming the remnant are in idp camp and their land has been overtaken their land has been renamed their land are now a land where you have somebody telling you we are going to be building a uh, one million thousand houses scam, uh, house camp for Funanese in another man's land. I don't know if they have commenced. Those of you that are good in listening to news, finding out the news, know I think about two or three months ago, a Chetima came out and announced the commencement of house camp for the Funanese in Benue State. They take over your land. They, they will take over your land and the mother you and destroy your communities. The remaining ones will be chased into IDP camp and they will use your land to build houses for the same families who have chased you out. And look at them here. They are not telling you that this is the problem. They are now telling you that the problem is because you have to import food. Listen to him. Listen to him. We have come almost to the end of their patience. And I think the elasticity is now going to snap if we are not careful. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you. Hey, distinguished colleagues, I'm Ahmed Lawan. I represent Yobe North, Senatorial District. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, let me commend the movers of this motion and also add here that patience, tolerance, is, uh, they are both elastic, but they are not eternally elastic. Our students are facing real, real hunger. I traveled to two states last week in the north, particularly. 
and I've seen firsthand how people, especially those who are not in the civil service, nor in any business, common everyday citizens are suffering, fighting, struggling to have food at least once in a day. Under normal circumstances, Mr. President, in the rainy season, from maybe June up to September or October, when there will be harvest of new foodstuff, prices escalate. Prices of foodstuff. Now, we don't even have. That's the truth. Mr. President, in today's national dailies, the executive arm of government is saying is considering reducing or removing taxes on imported food stuff. Mr. President, here's the catch. This Senate must engage the executive immediately. What are the issues? Which taxes are they talking about? Because we should be seen to be doing the right thing. We have really little or nothing in our food reserve across the country. And nobody should come and tell us uh, they will distribute food stuff from our silos. The silos are empty, Mr. President. So it means we have to import food. And if we have to import, it means we need foreign exchange. And that is because we have to engage with administration. We have to help the administration. Mr. President, we are the most vulnerable in the leadership uh, arrangements of this country, members of the National Assembly. Everybody looks up to senators or members of the House of Reps. In fact, people see senators like the Mazayas. Any problem, they say, go for a senator. There needs to be more pragmatic about addressing food insecurity, curbing other pharma crises, kidnapping for ransom and terrorism, and ensure the de development of a viable national commodity board to regulate the prices of gain, grains and ensure the elimination of artificial contribution to food and commodity inflation in Nigeria. This bill was enacted in 2015 against the backdrop of the rising cases of violence, especially domestic violence against women. The initial bill sought protection for women from male domination violence in the face of opposition to its obvious gender bias nature. The promoters renamed it, tinkered with some of its provisions, introduced seemingly gender neutral language, and successfully obtained its, pass its passage. Its explanatory memorandum states that it prohibits all forms of violence against persons in private and public life, and provides protection and remedies for victims and punishment of offenders. Upon close scrutiny of the act, it becomes obvious that it contains provisions that are inimical to the realization of its objectives. Mr. President, my very distinguished colleagues, going through the provisions of the act, it is obvious that it is plagued by substantial and drafted uh, challenges. This underscores the necessity for a holistic reform of the Act to bring the provisions in line with the realities of societal change and drafting standards to effective dispensation of justice. It will be a sad day if we appear to do anything that will revise what the executive is trying to do in giving effect to the recommendations of the Orosaye report, which most Nigerians accept and uh, expect the president to carry to conclusion. I am unable to support the idea 
everything in its totality as captured in this motion. Because our commitment to cut out costs, to reduce waste in the public sector, I think it's something that we all share. And when the executive have taken decision, it's not abolishing the responsibilities of, uh, of, of, the, uh, of the film industry. It's probably reducing it as a department so that you can cut out your overhead and save money for other things. Just earlier, before this one now, we spent time debating what government should do to ameliorate the current food crisis. We just have limited resources at every point in time. So still be taken by the executive to give effect to the more talked about Rosaye report. I don't think that this Senate should block that effort. Because Nigerians must feed. Everybody's concerned. The primary role of government is to ensure the welfare and security of the citizens. And that is the reason why we are here. We must take emergency steps. The government is doing its best by ensuring that any food item that enters the country is zero levy in order to make sure that people have food. And then, of course, the distribution of these fertilizers across is to enhance production, at least within this period. Because On... Now, it's very good you listen and hear them. You see, sometimes it's good <clears throat> to allow some people talk without interrupting them. You hear them tell you that the option for those that are hoping that Nigeria have food anyway to give you, I want them to know that it's like hoping that you are going to be romancing mommy with her. <laughs> no. It's like hoping that you're going to be romancing or wedding mommy with her. Nigeria don't have anything. They don't even have silos. Listen, Nigeria don't have anything like reserve anywhere. Both food, both money, everything they don't have. I have asked this question before. Let's assume they want to go into importation. Even if you import the food and bring it in, <clears throat> Who are the people that we go that are going to be buying the food from you? Where are the money you are going to be buying the food from? You? Because as we speak, if you come here, where I am now in Europe, um, a five kilo bag of rice is sold for about um, 10, 10 euro or less or 12 euro. Let's just say 10 euro. Five kilo, I'm telling you about. The 10 euro, five kilo in Nigeria is about 15,000 naira, right? Or more. 15,000 naira or more. I believe. Let me shake. But I have where I check money every day. Now, 10 euro <coughs> in Nigeria money. Mm -hmm. 10 euro in Nigeria money should be um hold on 10 euro just 10 euro 10 euro is about 17,000 naira I don't know how many of you can see it this is it uh no seeing it uh I don't know you cannot see it it's just 17,000 17,000 naira today 17,000 naira as with 10 euro. Okay, why am I saying this? 17,000 naira and they pay you 70,000 naira a month. You pay your house rent. Okay, let's say you pay your house rent yearly. You have to be seven. Let's assume you have family of um, five. You have family of five, five people, mama, papa, three children, five. 
and you are living we know nigeria and our people they manage so you manage to live in two bedroom apartments two bedroom apartment now in nigeria is about three hundred thousand naira a year three hundred thousand naira let's divide it by 12. is it about um forty thousand a month right am i right is it about forty thousand a month no mm -mm. Uh, but uh is it four thousand a month four times ten forty no forty times ten four hundred thirty times ten three hundred three hundred and uh okay let's just say that five thousand every month you have to change that you have to save that five thousand naira for your rent hmm? if you minus thirty five thousand if you minus thirty five thousand from okay let's just assume minus thirty thousand from 70 you have 40 and uh, they are importing this um uh, uh, rice for you now when they import rice you will buy a bag of rice eh, for eighty thousand because they are going to subsidize it, the thing will come down. If you buy a, a bag of rice for 80,000 Naira, hmm? you have removed um, you have removed 30,000 from 70, you now have 40. Okay, that 40, you will buy half, okay? Divide half into two, divide the bag into four. You have um, 80 times four. You have 20,000. You buy 20,000. Remaining 20,000 for you. You have to buy beans. You have to buy gari. You have to buy water. Because in Nigeria, you buy everything. You buy water. You buy the ground. You mash on. You pay transport. The money we know. I, I just want you to get the message. It's not about the salary. It's just about importing food. The solution to Nigeria problem is let the Funanese go home. Biafrans go home. If you ever want to go with the Funanese, beautiful, let them join the Funanese. We are not interested where you go. We are only interested where we Biafrans go. My people, now welcome to the uh, now welcome to the program. Ah, where is uh, where are there? You're welcome. Uh, Omwa and uh, also, also, on one, also, you're welcome. On one, you have the mic. Good evening, my brother. Man. I thank you so much. I want to just talk about this process they are doing in the so called you call Nigeria. They are doing process because they don't need food. They are not even doing protest. Mazi, Omwa, uh, you are, are you, are you listening from another device because you say Koi? Okay, are okay, you listening let me, from the device? So, I'm, I'm, I'm using my phone. I'm using my phone. Are you hearing okay. now? You say Koi? Yeah, okay, yeah, you go on, go on. Okay, I, I want to comment about the protest they are doing. This protest, they are just doing it because they don't see food. Eat. They are not doing protest because they want to change their life or they don't want a better. They don't want a better things to come. Because if they are doing it, that they want they want better things to come. All government institutions, including where they from, they for you. They are supposed to close down there. Even the government don't see anything before they will answer them. But they are doing protest. It's not affecting the government. Because um school everything about government is working, the police station is working, yeah, they they see export and import oil. So aeroplane is moving. So they are the, the project they are doing is not affecting them. If they may if they the minute they want to really change their life, everything concerned in Nigeria institution, they're supposed to close it. It's only when the government they don't see income before they will listen to this format. That's the area I want to talk, uh, talk. So the process they are doing, they are just wasting time. The so-called president or presidency is not 
minding them. It's not concerned. It's not like they are making noise. They are pouring water on top of cocoyal leaves. Because water doesn't stay in cocoyal leaves. When water drops there, it wash away. So they are just wasting their time. So what we are saying is that let them allow you their time. Go our own to to take our country, to manage our country by ourselves. And I like what the Biafra government in Asia are doing. Because by December now, when our country will be really really independent, and here we can manage what we have, then the government will pull long. What you say for common man like me? As I talked yesterday, I'm in Lagos. I know what we are seeing here. So, um, if individual government can come one day, attack Ibo people shop, the other day they come to Balogo market, attack our shop, use good notes, and begin the square people market. They are not doing it for anything, they just want to be fed up. So, that they are, what they are doing is not so painful. So, yesterday you tried to collect your WhatsApp number, but my door of my phone off. I don't know how you send me your WhatsApp number. So, other things, I will send you other thing for WhatsApp. And uh, how I will get the Lagos admin so that I can be participating okay. in everything you are doing. Hold on, just, hold on. Let me see if I can give you the link right here, right now. All right, bro. Mm. Mm. Um, um, I think uh, all you have to do is click the number and uh, you click it, it's a link, you click and join, and it's only in WhatsApp, I'm sorry, um, uh, Telegram, you have to have Telegram because you can't get it from WhatsApp, you get it only through Telegram. So that, that is okay. all you to hear all right. only to send you. Mm. All right. So it's uh, about uh, Thank you. Just Telegram, I will send you in Telegram, hold on, let me, even if I give it to you, you are on WhatsApp, you, you will not go in unless you are in Telegram. So anybody that wants to join any um anywhere in Biafra land you are, um, any state of Biafra, you want to join the uh, uh, um, Allies Zone, or you want to join your county, all you need to do, get your, uh, install your uh, Telegram app. Just the same way you install WhatsApp, get your Telegram, Tell me, ask me for any of the media, but they will send you the link you join. You can't join it from WhatsApp. It's only from Telegram. Okay? All right, all right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Mazuzo, can you hear me? Mazuzo, can you hear me? Okay, Doreen. Doreen, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Ah, you have the mic, my dear sister. You're welcome. Okay. Hello, 247 and all good beer friends. Mazugo. Hold on. Who is speaking? Mazugo. Yeah, okay. Ozo. Okay, go on. Now? Uh, Doreen, Doreen, just a moment, please. Okay. Okay, Ma thank you. Okay. Go on, we are Thank listening. Thank you for your good job. Thank you for your good job. And I love that. You see an EKO? Oh, Ndewo. Yeah. And they tell uh, uh, those who want uh, their masters to colonize them, to recolonize them, they will recolonize one thousand times. We the beer friends, uh, we are independent already from, from the beginning. And we love us. So, this year you can... They will. They will. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, Doreen, Doreen, you have the mic. Okay. Um, no. Nigeria, those who are called in Nigeria and still believe in Nigeria, they're just fooling themselves, saying that they are protecting. 
Mm. They're not protesting. They're just pulling themselves. And they're so useless that people that are as hungry as yourself and suffering the same thing you're suffering are people that you are going to loot their, their shops. All of them know where all the politicians have company. They know where they have all their transactions. They don't go there. They're just weakening themselves. So why do you think that this protest is going to have effect on anybody? They're enjoying themselves. They're at home eating. And people are there fooling themselves. On top of that, they're going to kill a lot of them. You know, they're waiting for, you know, Ipos to come and join them. They've seen it. Europeans, they've seen it that they cannot do anything. And they're even so stupid that their brother is the so-called dead president. The Fulanis have their own different agenda altogether. But the Europeans are not reasoning that very well. Buhari did exactly the same thing, even worse than what this one is doing. There was no protest. The outsiders, even when they talk about it, they closed it down. Now they are protesting with the uh, um, Russian flag. What does that mean? Are they read, reading meaning into all those things? Let them continue to work for Bia France. We are gone, no? We are gone. That time has gone when we join and use our head to carry your problems. No. No. We are, we are done and we are gone. They've killed us enough, and we have learned our lesson in a hard way. If they want, they should take care of themselves. If they want, they should kill themselves. I wish they would destroy everything concerning that do called Nigeria. But they are not even, they don't have strength for that. Shame on them. Shame on them. We are gone, and we are gone, we are, we are, we are out, and they know that. And those idiots that call themselves the governors that are taking credit of our prime minister, jokers. But they know that people know that, I mean, we are not listening to them again, that they are just figurehead. Let me just give them that, that they are just a figurehead. That's what I want. I want to use this opportunity to tell them. If they want to protest, they should destroy everything office concerning Nigeria then they know that they will listen to them. Foolish people. Ugo, thank you so much for the opportunity. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> the thing is, uh, is uh, one thing people must understand is that it's not about listening to anybody. <laughs> Even if you burn down Nigeria, Tinubu have no solution. I don't know if, I, I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying. Yes, there is something that is the government don't want to do this. Okay, it's a different thing. But the government don't have solution to this. It's another different thing. Okay. Tinubu have no solution, and the nobody, nobody in that dear Nigeria have any solution because there is no solution. Nigeria have no money. Nigeria borrow money. Because they implanted the Fulanis. They implanted these Fulanis that are destroying our farmland. The same thing we are saying. If you listen to the last video I played here, this video I played here, they were telling you in this video yes, from the beginning. Here in the north. Or here in the north. We have started seeing it visibly. People are hungry. Very, very hungry. Many cannot go to their farms. All of us know this. In the north central, the northeast, and the northwest. Increased electricity price, increased everything, and we are yet to get the right measures to provide cushions for our citizens. We wouldn't like the kind of thing that we see in our streets. And it is time that we take every possible action together with the executive arm of government to ensure that food flood our country, the right food, importation. Government must be entirely responsible because we cannot, 
We cannot take people for granted for too long. They are clamoring for importing food. Hmm? I've explained this before. But I want to tell you that Nigeria don't even have the money to import this food. One. Secondly, even if Nigeria should import food and sell to the people, the salary you pay to people will not be able to buy the same food you are importing and selling. Above all, the problem is not just that you have scarcity of food. The problem is that they are not addressing the situation that led to the food scarcity. Because the problem, the situation, the everything that led to this is that some people in the name of whatever they call themselves are taking over the land by uh, carrying out ethnic cleansing and the land grabbing policy and the people are in idp camp i've asked this question before as the people outside the idp camp and are, are crying and protesting for food have you imagined what those people in idp camp will be going through now these are the same people that will come here and they will tell you that they need schools they don't have schools they don't have this i want you to know that jonathan built more than 270 schools for them they destroyed all of them they burnt them down now i want you to hear this listen to this in part. that part of the country uh, you mentioned uh, the things that we have not seen in a long while uh, treasonable in nature uh, protesters, you know, uh, hoisting uh, the flag of another country, I believe it's Russia. Uh, you mentioned uh, the, the, the part of uh, protesters are calling for a military intervention, treasonable uh, without a doubt. Uh, you didn't yeah. mention the part that where other people are saying, uh, Ba me ye chanting, Ba me ye, Ba me ye, which, as you know, in Aousa, I believe, means that we're done, you know, we're no longer interested, kind of a thing. Do you think that what we have witnessed is a commentary on? Uh, the 14 months of Ashwa Jibola Ahmed Tinubu as president so far in the north. You know that the images that will stick in people's minds will be that innocent boy in Kaduna had been shot by the military. Uh, uh, the way that tear gas uh, was unleashed on protesters in Abuja, in Kano, uh, in Beduguri, is that the way that Ashwa Jibola Ahmed Tinubu and his administration will be perceived for the next... Uh, two years plus of his administration in the northern part of Nigeria. Yeah, thank you very much. I, I, I am happy you, you, you directed this question at me. And uh, first, let me tell you that um, where the president in his address categorically requested protesters to return home and embrace dialogue and come and dialogue with him, uh, or with the government, I, I, I think I, I would like to appeal also to the protesters to heed to that statement. Uh, the president is the father of the nation, and he had said, look, where I have heard you, you've made your point. Uh, the issues that you have raised, I understand them, and I feel them, and I, I, I want us to sit down and talk about how we can go about them. Uh, all the, the other aspects that you're talking about, him cutting the cost of governance and everything, you know, should be the subjects for negotiation, for dialogue. Even in conventional war, at the end of the day, the, the opposing sides must sit around a table and discuss. The end of every conflict is dialogue. Uh, there is no conflict that ends perpetually on the streets or on the battlefield. So, so we, we, we hope and pray that going forward, this address should uh, signpost an end to the protest and the beginning of the dialogue process that would uh, unfortunately are opportunist. They just look for an opening and then they, 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 they come in and, and begin to, to do this. And then there are also, you know, the, 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 the economic aspect. Uh, the ones the president content from whatever you are thinking of. So we have neglected education in northern Nigeria. We have allowed a large army of, and without imbibing any values, 
They don't even know, and they don't understand what is family, they don't understand what is societal values, they don't understand what is societal norms, and they, they are rooming the streets. And we could see them, five to ten, coming out to protest. And, and imagine when they broke into Kano, the, 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 the National Library in Kano, they took away everything except books, not one. Are you getting the message? In Kano, they were protesting. They <laughs> broke into the library. They took away everything except books. They stole everything, <laughs> but they, they did not touch book. And these are the, they have library there. Are, are you getting the message? And I wonder if you have this library, federal government library, built library in Imo, in Anambra, in Abia. If you see anything there, it's the community that built it. But this one, federal government have ministry for Amajiris. They have ministry for cows. They have ministry for empowerment to whatever. Many ministries for them. They have quota to go to school. Every family, every community have quota to go to school. Secondary to university, free. They don't go to school. Jonathan built more than 200 how, uh, schools for them. They destroyed them. As we are here speaking, the schools in the northern area, 80% of the school buildings has been taken over by Boko Haram terrorists and other insurgency. They use them as their campaign ground. And the Nigerian military and the Nigerian government know about this. And these people in these schools come out from there, they operate from there, why Nigerian government have not gone there to attack them or throw bombs is still what we can't even understand. But they come to Biafra land to throw bombs on residential buildings, residential compounds. They shoot people, they burn down houses. This is what we are saying. They go there, they stole everything. Yet they will come and tell you Nigeria is those. All these schools and library that we have built for them is from the money taken out of our land. Is from the money taken out from the people that are not going to school. You take the money from the people that are not going to school. Look at the, the, the people that are not going to school. You take the money from their land. You refuse to build schools. You refuse to build hospitals. You went to people that don't need school. You forcefully build the school which they don't value. Look at these people. That, they need school. This is a, uh, you this do is not a, give uh, to them. Listen to them. And even the junior secondary school in uh, one of the states in northeast Nigeria. Okay? It may interest to know that this is the GS1 class. Am I right? Yes. This is GS1 class. And then this is what? Primary what? This is primary four and five. Please come close. Let us let us see the building. Let us see the, the board. This is primary four and five. And then um, we will go to the other classes. Please let, let, let us see the, the building. This is what they have as building. And then we have uh, primary three and four here. This is primary three and four. We have the primary one here, the KG. And then there, we have uh, primary what here? Primary one is here. And KG. Okay? And then, it may interest you to know that this is a school that is under the state government. Like I said, like I said it's one of the states in northeast Nigeria. I would like, I, I wouldn't want to mention the states. So that the state will not see us as putting them in bad light. We are calling on well. Now, these are people that need school. They want to go. Nobody is going there to erect or even put a block. No. I want you to see oil producing area in Biafra land. And they see no school, no nothing. But they are wasting your money, our resources, 
to go and build schools for people that are destroying it. If they break it down today, tomorrow they will build a new one. They will break it down tomorrow, they burn it down, they build another one for them. Terrorist insurgents will take over the school, they went to another area and build, they take over. Listen, watch, watch this community now, watch. Agree with me that Nigeria is one of the highest oil producing countries in the world and Delta State is said to be the, one of the highest oil producing states in the country. Right now guys, I'm at Omadino community in Wari South local government area of Delta State. Now Omadino community is said to be one of the highest oil producing communities from this region. Now, you might want to think that such a community as Omadino that plays a very vital role in the oil and gas sector of the economy should at least boast of rich and adequate infrastructure facilities, you know, um, lights, roads, good roads, good access to job, employment and all of that. But that is not the case of Omadino. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Chekube and you are welcome to Butterbox. You are seeing the oil community, oil producing community. You see the kind of mansions they live in? Are you seeing it? These are the people that their land gives you the oil we are talking about. The oil that Shell is stealing from you. Look at them. You see the life they are living? You see the kind of mansions they live in? This is a place where the, uh, what do you call him? Former minister, I don't know of now, the minister for petroleum, we go to Abuja, we go walk to this place. He will fly from Abuja in the morning with helicopter, go to job, go to his office here. In the afternoon, he will fly back to have lunch. And they come back in the evening. He flew to and fro six times every day. Look at the people living in the community. Look at their life. Look at the life they live. No school. Are you seeing the kind of community we're talking about? You see their life. You see them. Look at them. Peter B has not gone there to look for solution. Peter B has not gone there to solicit for anything for them. Look at them. For those people in Wari that say, we are not, we are fine, we are not. This is your land. You produce oil for another people to use it to better their life. And you are here. People are not seeing that. Where is that one that do hair, put his hair like this? Say, Parana or Parana? What is his name? Parana? Eh? Parana? Parana that will do hair like this. He will come to the social media. He have platform to tell the people about his community that the Nigerian government has stolen their life, stolen their bread, stolen everything. He will not do it. He will come here to mock me, to mock Biafra, to mock Nandikano, to mock Simon Epa, to mock the government. Because he has run away all the way to Turkey to, to, to do cyber crime. One day now, when they catch him and put him in prison, he will say, hey, my brother is in prison. He will not use what God has given to him to fight for his people. I'm not calling you to fight for Biafra. Don't fight for Biafra. Fight for yourself. You come from, you a worry boy. Look at what is happening in your community. Look at your community, how they look. I post it here for you to see that I am not just telling you a story tells by the moonlight. Look at Wari. Over here is the town hall of Omadino community. Let's go check it out. This is the dilapidated state of the Omadino town hall. As rich as Omadino community is in terms of oil, look at what you can make out of it. the video is good. I want you to shake and find out yourself how many skyscrapers you will see in this community. How many story buildings you see? How many express roads you see? 
how many cars you see that pass them by as there how is that road motorable do you think moto do you think people that live in that community even have a car that recycle keke then they don't have and you are you, our money the money gotten from this community are being stolen by these criminals in the name of senators that are being stolen, that are being used to build schools that people do not have value for. The building library, they're burnt down, they destroy. If you must destroy government properties, are you going to destroy the library? No, it's to tell you how much they think. When you see the vice president Shetima tell you that they don't want anything restructuring, restructuring my foot, restructuring to hell with restructuring you don't understand what they are telling you they have told you that they are not looking for development they are looking for finalization sharialization yet yeah, people are not getting the message they are clamoring for hunger listen to them worry south local government area of delta state now is it true that Omazino community is um the highest oil producing community in the state yes it's true Okay, what can you say about the um, standard of living right here in Omadino? Mm, as you can see now, this is the community of Omadino. This is Omadino community, the, which I know. My, the idea that this community is the richest oil producing community in West Africa. This is the Omadino. As you can see, look at, take a look at the community. Nothing is happening. Nothing. Even when the community now the highest oil producing community, the people here are suffering. Most especially the youth, they don't have job. Most especially the youth, they don't get job. Then the men also with wives and children, they are suffering because no job for them to to follow up with. I may why they say the land get oil. They say the land they good. They produce oil yeah, like that. And why the men are suffering? Why the youth are suffering also? So even the women also, they are working hard, so hard to assist their husband to make sure that the children feed. Then now let government try and help the youth, the men and the women to empower them, to give them job, to make sure that they have something doing. Since here is oil yeah, producing the most highest place, so let them try for us. Community issue, I can wish you bashi. So based on fashion to watch, I will work out your goal. I'm a mogul, I like to put something on there. You can't be bow and cajer. So it turns a jay can go to you. So Odu Jan, yes, he's an ajay, and which is supposed to be she go medica, move about bow about and cajer she. But left by Naja, Cashini or Winio, so I ended it to watch any kind of cook by Jay, and Nusha, and I wish I could be here, but wish I be a day. So, where matter your cigar? What do you want me to come and do for this community? I want to come to do something, screw everything for the community. Now, we go benefit us now. We can make us begin everything. Are you listening to them? They want school, they want a hospital. But the government of the so-called zoo will not come and build it. They will even Jonathan did not do this. Jonathan was the second Agri Hiroshi who wanted to please the northerners so that there will be peace. Yet, is there that peace? Had Jonathan come to this land and the user resources he wasted in building more than 280 or 70 schools for them that they destroyed today and build two, only two in this community, today they will not have been singing like this. Build two schools, one hospital for them. Give them teachers. They are asking for school. Yes, they have a many role to play. They have a role of the market. They have a role of the light. They have a role of the community. The community transformer. We don't have transformer. We don't have anything. They have many roles to play to help us. Okay, now due to the exploration of oil.
If you don't have transformer, will you have light? Uh, I don't want to go because you have seen the electricity poles they put there, but you don't see wire pass through it. Is to tell you the kind of thing. No, I, I'm not showing you this because this is and it. I'm showing you because this is the oil producing area in from Biafra land. This is the land the same Ware have seaport functional seaport, but it was locked. It was blocked because they don't want anybody to benefit anything from the land. Wickedness. Um, it brings about uh, environmental hazard like um, oil spillage, like um, pollution. Doesn't that affect your activities in the river, like fishing and all of that? It affects us everywhere. Many times, uh, we pollute us everywhere. When you put net, oil full everywhere. No fish, nothing, nothing. We pack the net. Look at my net for here. Don't look it now. It's sun that dry the oil. Nothing, nothing. We cannot bring fish. We cannot bring anything. Nothing we can bring out because of the oil pollution. Nobody, we don't have anybody that come outside to come and help us. This place is the Amadino center of market. This good business is only the place that Amadino community used to feed, to have anything. And this fish pond here, apart from this place, we don't get any place to feed again this place that is the place that we use to feed and to eat to train our children no school nothing nothing if we hungry we come this place and walk otherwise no market nothing nothing it's only this wood business that we use to take care of ourselves this fish pond over here is said to be the only means of survival for the people of our community as you can see Okay now guys, we are at the river bank now to go find out, to go see for ourselves how far the extent to which the oil spills may have caused damage to the waters. Let's go. Wow. Wow, you can see, you can see. But not sure that side though. So how do people survive over here? If you can see now, if you look to that other area now, this is a river now area. Most of us here, our benefit is from the fishing. Most of us are fishermen. Like me now, I used to do fishing. Okay. And afterward, they will say that we are the highest oil producing community yeah. in West Africa. Apart from fishing, we cannot be able to survive. And this is the community. Well, you said that um, um, since the exploration of oil from this community, there are some things like oil spillage and all of that. Don't don't it you know affect your activities on the river? Why? Why? It affects us some time. If you even go to the water side now, you see some of some of the oil spillage that happened some time ago. But in now we even complain to some of the, yeah, the uh, Asian workers. Yeah. Yes. 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 Some of them we even complain to them, but they came. They viewed some of the. The place is them, but afterward they let us know that they will come back to us. But in now, nothing like that happened. Because of the whole year, wherever they don't have much prewinko again, so that will make them to suffer. So they need help from government. Now government don't do anything for now. What did they happen for the community? I more uh, but Oja I ain't know me. I ain't need pump. I ain't no reggae. I ain't no tukpa. We my two community where those you go no kenega. All streets are so much better now. Eh, no one is doctor. Eh, no one needs treatment. They more have to die. More be injured now. We, we my two are good doctor. We know. Eh, no one treat on you. Eh, no one come to you. Eh, no one come Eh, yeah. Eh, no one come. Eh, no one square now. Eh, no one school. No teacher. Eh, no teacher. No school. We all born to come back. No one come to our own. We all born. I mean, eh, no one come. No born. We all born. They do go. Eh, no one come. No mad no. Then they more go. We. Eh, no carry on. No, who took a neck and utupa two weeks, three weeks, and that's a new tupa. The tupa last lights, lights. Okay, what do you have to say to the government in general? Just pour out your mind. Okay, we we'll beg the government as I am now. I don't have anything doing, and I'm from this community of Madino. And we say that we are the highest oil producing community. Most of the youth, most of all of all the youth in this community, we don't have empowerment, no job. Nothing is happening. Because of hungry, sometimes the youth fights. Some Even if you lose this guy talking here, 
Where is he? If you look at him, you see he don't have strength. Strength, common strength to speak. He don't have that strength to talk. He's hungry. And they will tell you that your problem is Simon Eva. My people, if you do not wake up for yourself, nobody is working up for you. Nobody is, nobody is coming to help you. Nobody. That's just a simple truth. Uh, Doreen, I don't know if you still want to say anything because um, uh, my, my mouth don't depend me. I have to go and rest. Okay. Okay. So, my people of Biafra, I want us to know we have to fight to liberate ourselves. Support this government from every angle, from every corner, from every means. Support this government under the leadership of Simon Egba, that in Finland. Support him. If you have this money, Invest it in IOU, Biafra. Do your fundraising. Do your tax, weekly tax. If, if, even if it is one, one dollar you can pay every week, pay it. We are over 80 million Biafrans all over the world. If every Biafran can pay every day, every week, one dollar, every Biafran, we have 80 million dollars a week and the biafra will come a week but our problem is that we ignore our responsibilities we ignore our responsibilities we believe some people are there to do it for us we believe that there are some people that this is their responsibility is not all of our responsibilities but your freedom is your responsibility it's either you get yourself freed or somebody is taking you away think about it i have to stop here i must say thank you so much for being part of this program if you have not liked this program try and like this program are you like i see you i greet you baristas uh, Clement Friday, my Biafra, Chris, I greet Sonny, 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 they will be Afra, and uh, Frank, Obieze, Grace, Omoboya, Ozidi, and uh, Clement, I greet you, Ugo Chuku, I greet you, I greet you, Nolin, I greet everyone, 555 Vision, Shidera, William. I greet all of you. I respect all of you. I love all of you. Namde, and Benjamin, and Stella, Ozoka. I greet and respect to BSZ, uh, One Love, Triple M, and every other person. If I don't call your name, I love you. Yet, I still love you. I want us to know that Biafra is our destination. Without Biafra, is nothing. We must fight. To free ourselves that is the only solution left for us we have done everything we have sacrificed we have pleaded we have begged we have tried to defend ourselves we have tried to explain our situation we have tried to uh, make people understand that we are good people we are nice people we don't want trouble we've tried to go into church system we all turned into priests we begged we do this but nothing worked for us you have to be offensive if anybody comes before you if you find anybody trying to come advancing bring that person down before the person gets to you if that person gets to you they are bringing you down i must say thank you so much for being part of this program god bless you and bye for now that simon epa is not looking anybody's face the only person i respect in this struggle is mazin amdikano i gave him my word that i will never disappoint him before you pick a fight 
Opupumbo, aburo opuna no madu no no, onya hakadendo. No. Opupun ke mu, ono roji no no, obuwa ge pi. No matter what, you can't take it out. Agba go mu Nigeria no no, bandiro biafra no no, bandisi na biafra ga ha biya, in 2023, no, no. I don't want to know, no, no, I go to war, war. Woto, woto. You can never swallow it, and you can never bring it out. So I want you people to understand that propaganda is ongoing. They even say they are signing petition to arrest Samoneta. I do not know, you know, <laughs> You know what kind of petition they are signing to arrest Samuelita for other reasons. These people don't understand that we are actually in freedom fighting, freedom fighting where we do not validate Nigeria state. We are fighting for our freedom. Nigeria state have committed war crime, genocide, crime against humanity in our land, leading us to take the decisive decision we are taking today. And every necessary measure will be taken to make sure that we save Biafrans from Nigeria. Come to 2023. If you eat me like this, you will be infected. If you eat me as a meat, or you eat me as a meat, or you eat me as a meat, if you eat me, and go to sleep and wake up, you know him. You can't eat me. 